Hi folks, I am so excited for this. Take a look at this motion. So this is amazing. Uh, we started out with a clear path and we did a video where we kind of just showed the basic motion, how fast they are, how accurate they are, and how easy they are to work with Arduino. So this video builds off of that. There's one change, which is this clear path is a new one. We swapped it out. This is the least expensive clear path motor they make. We wanted to show just how much we can do with the cheapest one. So these are not cheap per se. This is about a $257 motor if you're buying quantity one, but it is amazing. For what you get is phenomenal. So again, if you're looking for the $20 stepper, this is not the right product for you. But for us, like all I've ever wanted to do in my life, seriously, I, I know I do this machining stuff, but all I want to do is this, Arduino automation, precision control. I, what I want to show you guys in these videos is how amazing these things are and how easy they are to work with. First thing I want to do, set up some indicators to prove in the last video, we had some bouncing and I think some folks thought that there was over travel. I want to prove that that's not happening. Then I've learned kind of the basics behind their MSP software it has a built-in oscilloscope. We can look at how accurate the motor is and whether it's varying, how much torque we're using and what the signal looks like. Like, is the Arduino signal good? Is, if it's Mach 3, if it's Linux CNC. Folks, this is amazing for when you're trying to build some sort of a machine or system. This thing can tell you if there's binding and kind of where it is. Yes. Finally, I'll admit, I didn't really know this, but apparently servos are a nightmare to work with because they have to be tuned and they have to be tuned for every application and every load. And ClearPath's pitch is they've got this auto tune. I kind of take it for granted, but apparently it's amazing. And where I think that's cool is we're tying all of this together with that, which is instead of just running this Bell Everman stage with no weight on it, we've got four two, four, six blocks. And how much do those weigh? About 34 pounds. Is that enough weight, Judd? You think that's enough weight? No, seriously, that's a lot of weight. So we added a bunch of weight to this thing. So this is the cool auto-tuning part. Go to setup, auto-tune, next, next. So it takes a few minutes. And again, a lot of this is lost on me because I don't really care. I want this thing to do awesome stuff, but this is apparently a really big deal. It's changing a ton of parameters. It's building like a profile around this motor with this you know, actuator, with this linear rail system, with this amount of weight. So you would never have to do this again, but like if you're building a plasma system or DIY CNC or whatever, we've got some, that's like my thing for 2017. We've got some more motorized Arduino stuff and they're gonna tie in some clear paths. You gotta let the motor know how to deal with that. And again, the folks at ClearPath really pr are proud of this, which I, you know, I've been impressed with everything they've been doing. So I assume that that's pretty true uh, on how to tune them. It's funny, we've been seeing ClearPaths turn up more and more on other products as well, which very interesting. So this takes anywhere from uh, three minutes to 10 or 15 minutes. I think it depends on, we were doing it with one of our other projects and we didn't have the motor secure and it took a long time. And I wonder if that's why. If you can see it's jerkiness, time out, quick technical thing here. Apparently it's throwing at it a really abrupt sine wave, not sine wave, a square wave. And that's really hard for the motor to deal with. So it's kind of solving for the worst case scenario. We'll see, see more of that in the oscilloscope here in a minute. We're done auto tuning. I wanna set up the indicators to test that whole accuracy and bounce issue. So let's go, control shift P is a little secret to go into expert mode. I'm going to go motor enable. And then I'm just going to use this plus button here to jog up. I would say the takeaway here, don't worry too much. This isn't meant to be a total like overview of how to use MSP, but more the point here is what you can do with it. So these four settings we'll come back to, but these are really important. What I want to do now is just show you one motion up. And we want to test, we'll go back down. We're just going to repeat this test up and down. This is cooking, by the way. I think we'll go through the map, but I think this is 867 inches per minute peak, but there's some acceleration and deceleration, obviously, to get there. The effective or average is a little under 500 inches a minute. But I've got a, a test that I think will be cool. I've got a couple of indicators here, and we're recording 60 frames a second, so it's not slow-mo, but we can slow it down and prove, I hope, um, well, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping we can prove out what I 
want to show, which is that there's no real tracking error. This is a half thou indicator. This is a tenths indicator. So this indicator is five times more, uh, not precise, but more uh, higher resolution than this one. So I'm going to adjust this guy to come down to zero. So let's just run a cycle. We're going to probably see this needle bounce past zero, but that's just because of the inertia of the needle itself. So go down, come back. So you see it go past zero there? Let's grab some shim stock. So shim stock, we keep this plastic stuff, it's super helpful, we use it to trim in our Tormach. The silver is half a thou, so that's this stuff. It's like, I mean, you can't even imagine how thin it, how thin it is, it's nothing. Slid the piece of shim sock underneath it. The needle's above the part. I'm gonna come down until I just barely touch. Okay, just barely moved. So that means it's touching, but if I pull this out, it should still be suspended in air. So when this comes back up, this needle should go to zero. This one shouldn't move unless we've over-traveled or overshot. Now, just to prove we're not full of it, let me just go ahead and adjust this down to zero. And now we should bump. Yep. But that's showing you the over travel is from inertia of the indicator needle. Links in the video description, but the ClearPath MSP software is free. Just download it right here. We'll pop it open. It recognizes your, your motor, which is like super cool. And I'm gonna hit that control shift P to go into the expert mode, which, which is not, I am not an expert, but uh, okay. I'm gonna click this little plus on the bottom right that gives me the oscilloscope. Now don't stop the video, don't unsubscribe just because I said the word oscilloscope, I swear. It's actually pretty cool. There's four values I care about. And this is a classic example, a good lesson in life, folks. Don't get overwhelmed. Let's, let me try to tell you what to focus on and ignore the rest of this noise. By the way, these gains and stuff is all what happens uh, and gets adjusted uh, during the auto-tune. So just to try to impress you, there is a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes. So what I want to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to use this little plus here to jog up. Oh, sorry, enable the motor. Now I can jog up. Amplitude is counts. Uh, dwell just means how long to wait between moves here. We're just playing around with some, some motion profiles. How fast do we accelerate and what's our velocity? So there's a spreadsheet. I'll put all the links in the video description. Really what this means is 235 for a velocity means it's trying to go 867 inches a minute. That is crazy to me. We got like, uh, I think over t a thousand uh, with no weight on it, a horizontal when it was just mounted on the Tormach. And acceleration of one means it's accelerating at, well, this doesn't mean anything to me, 61 inches a second squared. It's like a 0.15 Gs. But if we click this plus here, it's just going to loop through, going up and down. And up and down. So there's three things I want you guys to care about if you're interested in using a clear path to build a CNC or to build an automation machine that are super cool. And that is in this oscilloscope, F3 for tracking, F4 for the velocity, and F5 for the actual torque. So tracking directional, what does this mean? This means how close are we, how, how much are we losing? What's the error in position? What does this green gibberish mean? Well, take a look. If I move my blue to the end of the profile, and my A is right there at the beginning, this took 1.25 seconds uh, to com com complete. What's amazing is if I go to that end, my tracking position is negative one. Well, negative one what? The, each vertical line section here is 25 microns. 25 microns is about 1.6 thousandths of an inch. So if we, we're off by negative one. So if I do uh, 25 is 25 microns is equal to 0 0.0016. Sorry, that. And I'm off by one. Divide that by 25. We are off six millionths of an inch. So yes, there's an error. It is not a real error. Now we were off more 
uh, during the stream. If I look like here, two. So at the beginning, we peak out at like 10. So I at first was like, oh, that's no good. You're off by 10. Well, first of all, 10 is still uh, divided by 10. You're off by 1.6 thousandths of, oh, sorry, 1.6 tenths. So you're still, the worst is still a tenth of a thousandth. That's like nothing. And this isn't absolute. It just means at this point in time, I wish I was a little bit closer. I caught up right away. So it's, I don't mean to downplay because in there are certain applications where maybe this matters. Honestly, it kind of reminds me back to the webinar from HSM Works on advanced 3D toolpaths of understanding how your machine itself performs because G-code doesn't just give you the perfect motion. The machine controller interprets the G-code and decides how to build the motion profile. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. You don't get somewhere right away. But at worst case here, our error is one and a half tenths. Sweet. We start moving again and we switch to F4. Uh, command velocity. Uh, honestly, what this just shows you is what's the profile of the signal. So this is going to be super useful if you're using Arduino or using Mach 3 or Linux CNC to see, okay, I'm telling the motor to ramp up. That's how long this flat section I'm moving at full velocity and then this is my ramp down so this is why see here if we move this to the end the end me that little guy right there and we move a back to actually i can do a to zero um it was 1.25 seconds and in that time we moved 210 of these let me update my excel sheet so we moved 12.9 inches um, so let's hear that and we did that in one point what did I say 1.25 seconds 1.25 so that means we are moving um, 10 inches a second 10.3 inches a second times that by 60 that means our effective inch per minute is 620 now I told you this 225 velocity Actually, I, I bumped it down a second ago, sorry. 225 means we should be running 830. Why are we running 620 and not 830? Well, it's simple. We're running 830 at this section, but you got to speed up and you got to slow down. But it happens, I mean, look, it took, uh, it took 0.3 seconds to get to full speed, and that's basically pushing the absolute limits of this motor because we've got 30, what do we say, 34 pounds on it. Last thing was torque. This is helpful just to show you uh, let's see, let me change the scale. Okay, did you hear that little beep? That is a warning. It's not a problem. It's not an error. That little blue thing right there means torque saturation. So, like, we're right at the limit. If you have a system that has binding or you've got a problem with your, you know, your linear rails aren't, uh, you know, they aren't parallel to each other, the track, you're going to have a huge torque problem. What's cool is you can actually figure out where that torque spike is and you can figure out, is it a problem with the ball screw, with the linear rails, the binding of two axes? Uh, but it's not like a stepper where you don't have a clue what's wrong, why, and where. This tells you exactly. And this has also let us see how close we are to you know, are we within a reasonable operating range for this motor? I will say ClearPath and Technic have great uh, technical support. And if you're building a system, they're, I think, pretty willing to help you. So don't hesitate to reach out to them. Let's run that same code. I did change some of the speed parameters to make sure it's suited for these blocks um, from that we did in the last video. But we can use the... Um, oscilloscope to look at like, for instance, the signal. This is like the biggest thing is what's the Arduino signal look like? So homes and uh, the time intervals will change here a bunch, but look at that. So there's my trapezoidal signal going up and going down. I change my time here to 100. Gives you that signal. So there's the error. I just switched it to the F3 mode. I can literally watch as I'm moving along how much error there is in the system. So again, my point is that you can use this software. Uh, all I'm doing is the little USB mini cable plugged in uh, when it's on your CNC plasma or your CNC mill to look and see how good your motion is from your, uh, you know, gecko or, or whatever. We, we will be doing this later this year, by the way. Hint, hint. Actual torque gives you torque curve. How much of the actual peak are you using? Um, I'm not very good at using some of these oscill oscilloscope settings. So sorry. Uh, what I am good at is looking at something that's moving this fast and smiling. Oh my God, look at it. It's amazing. I think we're almost near the max. Uh, amazing. 
So we might be starting to get some torque saturation because we might be pushing it uh, pretty close. We had to have this, some, <laughs> I thought this video would be like an old beats new because we've got this old radial arm drill with the right angle table mounted to hold the stage because you've got some energy here. Can someone comment below? Do you know how? If I'm moving 34 pounds at uh, 800 and some inches a minute, how much foot pounds or energy is that? But what's cool too is if you look at your tracking air, like there's nothing. It's so good. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So there's, oh my God, look at that. So what are the takeaways? Folks, these things are awesome. We're actually now switching our 440 automation project over this. Why? Because servos, I now have an encoder and feedback and I know exactly where I am. You could do a stepper with a driver, but honestly the larger stepper and the separate driver isn't really any cheaper and you still don't have that encoder. And with ClearPath, you get all this diagnostic stuff, which I now really care about, and I see why that's so awesome. With a stepper, I think you would just build it to this huge margin of safety factor because you never really know. And I want you guys to see that with this MSP. We can see the torque, the accuracy, the, the resolution, all that stuff. And finally, power. This thing, this little 30, uh, NEMA 23, motor was moving 34 pounds up and down at 800 inches peak 500 or 600 what would we say average inches a minute accurately accurately more stuff to come folks this is what i love this is awesome thanks for watching take care see you soon